$2 per watermelon. It's farm to the market fresh produce, right for the picking. Thank you very much. But before all these tomatoes, melons, and more get here, they have to pass go here at the Peach Farm in Esparto, California. Megan George and her brother Ryan both help out at the family owned farm, which grows just about everything. We do tomatoes, melons, peppers, squash, eggplant, figs, apricots, and cherries onions and garlic. I think that's pretty much it. Their number one crop, tomatoes. In fact, judging from all these boxes, you could call this a tomato lover's paradise. People come and they tell us about all their tomatoes, but they don't have all the variety that we have, so that's why they come. So these are a ton of tomatoes. Yeah, we have a lot of variety here. We have a lot of pretty ones, like this one's a vintage wine. It's a striped tomato. That's pretty. It's really good. I see a bunch of little cute orange ones over here. Yeah, those are really sweet. These are the sun golds. Uh -huh. They're one of my favorites. They're really good. So what's your ultimate favorite kind? My ultimate favorite is the Cherokee Purple, which is Ooh. this one. Yeah. It's um, more acidic, but it has a lot of flavor. Every last one of them was grown sustainably. To find out what that means, we headed out to the vines with Dad, Ed, George. Now you like growing sustainably. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about what that means? Well, for me, it means we don't do any spraying of any kind, whether it's pesticides or uh, herbicides. Uh, as you can see, we got plenty of weeds to prove that we don't spray. Other things they do, use drip irrigation to conserve water, and instead of chemical fertilizers, they rotate crops to create a rich, natural soil. We, uh, we do everything really the way it should be done, I think. You know, I, when I was a kid growing up, I never liked smelling the sprays. So when I got older and started doing my own thing, I just said, you know what? I don't want to eat sprays. I don't want to smell sprays. So here I am, you know, growing beautiful tomatoes without spraying them. The same is true for these beauties. Mm, smell that, Jessica? Mmm, yeah, that sounds That's good. That's goddess. That's called goddess. Melons are the peach farm's other big crop. Workers comb the fields picking only the ones that are just right. Look at the sugar on that, Jessica. Huh? Is that sweet? Be careful. You don't sniff that sugar. That'll stay on your nose for a while. Mmm, yeah. You smell that? That's the ambrosia. Yeah. Look at that sugar. See that? Sugar draws the bugs, too. But George doesn't mind. You see this melon here? That one's been bitten like crazy by the bugs. And so that tells you that's a sweet melon because the bugs, they got a sense that we don't have. And uh, if they go after one melon that much, it has to be sweet. So yeah. they don't bug you at all, those bugs? No, the bugs, they don't bug <laughs> us at all. You know why? Because we have good bugs and bad bugs, but they all get along. Even so, what are they doing to make sure bugs aren't running amok, destroying their crop? There is no need to spray. If you sprayed, you'd kill off all the beneficials. You'd actually end up having more problems with the bad pest. Back in the vines, beneficials like spiders keep harmful bugs from eating all the tomatoes. This is like growing them in your garden. You know, if you're going to grow them, we just do it on a big level. But, uh, you know, why would you spray something and have to eat that spray later? It just, to me, it doesn't make any sense. It's a recipe for chemical-free produce. And these guys say they wouldn't do it any other way. Everything tastes better, I think, when you know that it's better for your body. And a lot of people like that. The customers, they like that. They don't like it when you use sprays and pesticides. It's good. I mean, it's the future. Everyone wants good local produce, you know? They don't want to pay money for not good things. So it's the way of the future. <laughs>